In this video, I want to have a little look at uh, the timing of giving instructions, uh, which are going to be, to begin with, just simple instructions for turning left from uh, a side road, a minor road, onto a main road or a major road. Okay, so pretty straightforward, uh, just following the MSPSL routine really, and just doing a simple left hand turn. Nothing complicated about that. And as we know, as full license holders, then uh, in order for us to go through, if you like, the MSPSL or the MSM routine, uh, it literally takes us a few seconds, uh, no more than that. But when you're teaching, particularly novice drivers um, that haven't done this before or haven't uh, practiced it very often, uh, then I promise you, you're going to be amazed at how much longer it takes them uh, to carry out the various different elements that they need to do in order to turn left um, than it will for you as a full license holder. And of course, that, that is then important for you to know uh, because obviously you're the one that's going to be giving them the instructions of what to do and how to do it and when to do it in order to turn left. So you know, let's have a few goes round of this simple left-hand turn and let's just compare and contrast uh, what it's like for a full license holder compared to a complete novice um, and then let's have a look at the impact that that will have on you as a driving instructor in thinking about the timing um, that you're going to need to use uh, when you're looking to give directions, not just for uh, left-hand turns, it could be for right-hand turns, the same would also apply uh, to traffic lights, roundabout meeting situations, pretty much anything that you can think of really, where the car is moving um, and you need to be well ahead of the game as the instructor if you're giving a lot of support to your student because, as I say, that's something that they haven't covered off in any depth or detail previously and therefore both their knowledge and their confidence is going to be very, very low, plus perhaps their ability as well. Okay, so um, let's put things into practice and let's see how it goes. So I'm just going to twist the camera around now. Um, you'll uh, then catch me when I get up to the end of the road. And to begin with, I'm just going to go through the timing of things that I do just as, as me, if you like, just as a full license holder. Um, you'll hear me talking to myself really, um, just going through the MSPSL routine and as you'll see, um, it's only going to take two, three seconds and I'll be very close to the end of the road before I start putting it together. Okay, so let's twist the camera around now and have a look. Okay, so I'm um, just checking around, make sure I'm putting away safely um, and then you'll see and hear me going through my MSPSL routine. coming up to this blue car now and passing it and then it's just simply mirrors signal position speed and look okay so obviously for a full license holder absolutely no problem at all um, you, you do it multiple times probably every time you get in a car do it without thinking about it and it's completely effortless but of course it's not for a learner like with any practical skill any of us are trying to learn at any point in our lives if we've never ever done it before and we've got no sort of frame of reference or past prior experience then to begin with it's pretty hard to learn the basics Okay, so what I'm going to do is park up again, roughly in the same place as I did before. <coughs> and let's go through, just while the car's at a standstill, <coughs> excuse me, um, the MSPSL routine uh, needed for just simply turning left at the end of the road. Okay, so what I'm going to encourage you to do now is grab a pen and paper, if you haven't got one to hand already, um, and just go through this little exercise with me, because we're just going to write down uh, the different elements that are going to be involved when it comes to giving directions to a student for turning left at the end of the road. Okay, so again, the MSPSO routine. Um, so, to begin with, of course, um, let's assume you've pulled off 
the car's moving, maybe you're in second gear, and you're coming down towards the end of a road, okay, and you need the student to go through um, all of the different elements that are required in order to turn left safely and correctly. Uh, so, of course, the first thing we know that they need to do is check their mirrors. But from a student's point of view, which mirrors do they need to check? It might sound obvious to you, but it won't necessarily be obvious to a student. So, of course, we need to highlight to them that they need to check their centre mirror and their left mirror. So what I want you to do is write down just the words centre mirror and then maybe leave a line space uh, underneath that and then put left mirror. Okay, now I would advise you to keep your words um, as short and as simple as possible um, because the more elaborate or lengthy you make them, just the more time it takes to get out of your mouth and the harder it is for a student to interpret uh, what it is that you're saying. Okay, so um, don't, don't think I'm being rude um, or asking you to be rude by using sort of very simple language. Uh, it's something that is definitely going to help you and your students, certainly in the early stages of their development. So, of course, we'll out centre mirror then and left mirror. So, next, left indicator or left signal, whichever you prefer. Okay, students don't really um, differentiate between one and the other if you play left left signal, left indicator, the likelihood is you're going to get the same sort of response. So yeah, don't get too hung up on the absolute precise language that we use, um, as long as it is plain, uh, simple and uh, easy to understand. Okay, so we've got our mirrors, we've got our signal, uh, then of course we need, um, in the MSPSL routine, sequence of events to consider positioning. But I would suggest with students, before you do that, you need that speed coming down, okay? So in order to get the speed down, you'd use an instruction like off gas, gently brake, okay? So let's recap through the list then. So we've got centre mirror, left mirror, left signal, off gas, gently brake, okay? Then, we need to encourage them to do something with the gears, okay? Or at least the clutch, depending on whether you want to keep the car moving at the end of the road or not. And I would suggest in the early stages, just get them to stop at every giveaway line um, so you've got time yourself to carry out the observations with your student and get gear sorted out if you need to, okay? It is possible um, as you become more skilled in what you do, and as the students get more advanced in their learning, um, the probably 80 to 90% of the time, depending on where you live, of course, um, if you're driving in quiet residential areas, you'll be able to get to the end of the road, um, slide it from second gear into first gear, for example, or third into first, uh, and you still have time to bring the clutch back up to biting point and then just creep and peep very slowly out from one in, uh, junction into the other uh, and therefore the car doesn't need to stop. But let's not overcomplicate things at this stage. So let's say we're going to stop at the giveaway line. Um, so once you've said off gas gently brake, then the next instruction is going to need to be clutch down. Okay. And then, of course, the car might still be rolling a little bit. So then we need to get them to stop next to, or sorry, stop just behind uh, the giveaway line, but we also need to get them to steer left as well. Because if they don't steer left, which is the positioning part of the MSPSL routine, then the likelihood is they're just gonna be pointing at 90 degree angle, straight opposite, uh, and then it's gonna be very awkward for them to steer out and for you to support them. Okay, so we've got clutch down, break a little more, steer left, okay? So let's leave it at there. Oh, let's leave it at that for the moment, okay? So let's now see how long it takes me as an instructor to get all of that out of my mouth and into a student's head, okay? Um, I'm literally just going to run through uh, that list of words or phrases that I've just um, encouraged you to write down um, and to begin with we're going to use the blue car 
uh, once I turn the camera around, we're going to use the blue car that's still on the pavement down there and, and see what happens when I start going through that uh, set of instructions, okay, in terms of timing of things. So again, I'm going to twist the camera around uh, and let's have a look at it in action. Okay, again, checking around, making sure it's safe. Put the indicator on this time because there are people about. Okay, so I'm going to start those instructions as I get to the blue car, which I'm coming up towards now. Okay, so centre mirror, left mirror, left indicator, gently brake, clutch down, steer. Oh! Didn't really get time to get it all in there, and that resulted in late and hard braking right at the end. Okay, so we know the distance from the blue car that is on the pavement, if it's still there when we get round again, um, isn't early enough for me to easily get everything in, just in terms of a list of instructions. So at this moment in time, we're not even thinking about the student's response. We're just literally thinking about how long it takes to get a set of commands or instructions out of your mouth, okay, if you are following a particular sequence. Now, of course, as your students get much more experienced and advanced in their learning, then the amount of information that you need to give them is comparatively much, much less. Yeah, so eventually you'll just be saying to a student at the end of the road turn left and then you'll just watch what they do okay uh, and hopefully they'll do everything that they need to and in plenty of time but in the early stages of a student's development where you're giving them what we call full talk through this is where the timing of things really becomes critical okay so I'm going to pull in again Hopefully you can see it on camera, we've still got that blue car up on the pavement in the distance. We know that that isn't far enough for me to get all of those um, instructions in comfortably. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my timing of things um, back towards me a little bit. So before the blue car on the pavement, I've got a black car in a driveway, okay, and immediately before that there's a black lamppost on the right. Okay, so let's start things from back there and let's see if that gives me enough time to get everything in comfortably. Okay, checking all around, no need for an indicator. Heading towards that black car in the driveway. Okay, so I'm going to start everything now, so centre mirror, left mirror, left indicator, gently brake, clutch all the way down, steer to the left, stop just behind the giveaway line. Okay, so that was certainly a lot better. Um, felt a lot more relaxed for me. Didn't feel like I was rushing my instructions right at the last moment. Um, so a, a much better distance to start my instructions. However, let's now have a look at things, if you like, from a student's perspective. Now bear in mind, this is pretty all brand new stuff to them. They haven't done it before, it's all unfamiliar, the words are unfamiliar, the process is unfamiliar. Um, the brain doesn't yet have, you know, the synapses worked out, you know, to make the information flow rapidly across the brain. Um, so that it gives the relevant signals to the eyes, hands, and feet. Okay, so it's almost like learning a new language um, and they're trying to piece things together. Uh, it doesn't matter how smart uh, they are, but, you know, it takes time. It takes time for the brain to process. It's got to hear what you're saying. It's got to 
convert that into something that makes sense to the person that's hearing it and then they've got to put something into action um, that roughly resembles the thing that you've asked them to do.